Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and this video is on Punnett squares and dihybrid crosses. No key concepts, so let's get right into it here with some examples. Well, first of all, a Punnett square is some tool that we use in genetics that helps us determine, based on the parents' genotypes, what the probability is that an offspring will have a certain phenotype. It also helps us map out the genotypes that are possible. So very simply, in our first Punnett square, they're usually a four square system here when we're looking at one particular gene. So let's look at a gene like um, eye color. And it's not as simple as just one uh, gene with two alleles, but let's imagine that eye color is controlled by a gene that we'll use the letter B for. The capital B, which is the dominant allele, would be for brown eyes. We'll, we'll call this for brown. And we'll call the lowercase one uh, the allele that controls blue eyes, and that's going to be recessive. So capital B is uh, dominant over lowercase b. Let's imagine that we have parents that are both heterozygous. So our two parents over here, P1 and P2, are going to be heterozygous for both. What I want to do is I want to figure out what the possible genotypes are for their offspring, and thus what the phenotypes would be as well. So what I'm going to do is on the top row of this Punnett square that I've drawn, I'm going to put the possible gametes for the, uh, the parents here. So for parent one, they can contribute either a capital B or a lowercase b. And then on the left side, I'm going to put down the gametes that the second parent can contribute, which is again either a capital B or, or a lowercase b. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of multiply, you can kind of think of it that way, multiply them together and see what the offspring will be. So this one will have two capital B's, heterozygous here for both of these, and then a homozygous recessive down here. So in this Punnett square, what I find is if you have these two parents that are both heterozygous for this certain trait, their resulting offspring will have one out of four homozygous dominant, two heterozygous and one homozygous recessive. So in this case, when we're looking at the chances of certain things happening, we can say that one out of four will be homozygous dominant, two out of four will be heterozygous, and one out of four will be homozygous recessive. Now, what does this mean in terms of probability? Well, if you have these two parents, there is a 25% chance that their child will have blue eyes. And there is a 75% chance that they will have brown eyes. Okay, so you can look at this a number of different ways. Now, that's just one way to do a Punnett square. What I want to also look at is how to do what we call a dihybrid cross. So a dihybrid cross is a little bit more complicated. We're going to pretend that we have two genes that we're looking at. We're going to have parent one, and we're going to have parent two. Now parent one's genes, we're going to look at something like um, straight or curly hair. Straight hair is going to be dominant to curly hair. Now we're going to pretend that we've got parent one, who is heterozygous for the hair gene, and we're going to also do attached versus uh, free earlobes. Free earlobes are dominant to attached earlobes. And we're going to pretend that this parent is also heterozygous for that trait. Now we're going to pretend that parent number two is heterozygous for both traits as well. Because we are doing what is called a dihybrid cross. Dihybrid means we're looking at two genes and we are looking at heterozygous versions of both of them. So what I'm going to do, since I'm looking at two genes, I'm not going to have a simple four Punnett square. It's going to turn out to be 16. So let me draw this whole thing out here so you guys can see. So we're going to have 16 squares, four by four, and then we're going to fill in our gametes on the top row and on the left-hand side as well. Now, what you have to do is figure out what gametes parent one and parent two can possibly form. Now you can use FOIL to do that, first, outer, inner, last. So in this case we can say, okay, parent number one can contribute this 
and this. So the, the first one of each, the outer one, the inner ones, and the last ones. So parents have to contribute one allele from each gene and only one allele. So in this case, parent one can contribute a capital H and a capital E. And then we keep following our foil first, outer, inner, and last. Okay, so those are the possible gametes for parent number one. Parent number two, since they are also heterozygous for both traits, they can contribute the exact same alleles. A capital of each, capital and a lowercase, lowercase capital, and both lowercase. All right. So when we do this dihybrid cross, what we're going to try to find out is all the different genotypes that we see and all the different phenotypes that we see. So if you put these all together, let's do this in blue here, we get, should have made my boxes bigger, it might have helped. So basically you get the idea here. What we're doing is we're just multiplying everything across. Okay, and as we do this, what we are learning is the different genotypes that are possible as we move through. Now, I can trust that you can complete this on your own, so I can save time here. But really, when you do a dihybrid cross, I want to make sure that you understand that you will always get a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Now what do those ratios mean? That means that 9 of the 16 offspring that we see here will be dominant for both traits, meaning phenotypically dominant. They're going to show the dominant trait. So that's 9 of them here will be dominant for both. Alright, dominant, dominant. And then three of them will be dominant for one and recessive for the second. And three of them will be recessive for the first one, but dominant for the second one. And then finally, one out of 16 will express the phenotype that's recessive for both. Now, if you go ahead and fill out that square and count them all up, you'll see. So in this case, just to show you, uh, this one right here, that's dominant for both. This one is also dominant for both, as is this one and this one. You start counting those up. Every time you see a phenotype that is dominant for both, you're going to put that on the first part there. Then you see uh, which, how many are dominant for the first gene and recessive for the second. Start counting everything up. So if I were to ask you a question that said, how many in this dihybrid cross would show a recessive trait for both, um, for both genes that we're looking at? And you would look at this, do the math and everything, and you would find 1 out of 16 would show that. Okay, now this is the long way to do it. Okay, you can make a 16 uh, grid uh, uh, test cross here. Or what you can do is instead, let's look at, okay, we've got parent 1, that is heterozygous for both. Parent 2, also heterozygous for both. What you can do is you can make one Punnett square for each gene that we're looking at. So let's start by going, okay, well let's do the Punnett square for just the H's. So parent one has one copy of each. And then we can do another Punnett square for just the earlobes. Okay, so what we can do is say, like, what's the question? The question is, how many... Um, or what's the chance that the offspring will be recessive for both traits? So, if we do our Punnett squares out like this, we will find how many are going to be recessive for each gene. Okay, so the chances of you getting a recessive uh, phenotype here for the first gene is one-fourth. The chances of you getting a recessive phenotype for the second gene is also one-fourth. All you have to do is multiply those two together to find how much the probability is of getting both of those. So one-sixteenth, very similar to what we just got. Okay, 
Now you can apply this to any number of genes. You could do three genes, four genes, five genes. As long as you know the parent's genotypes, you can do one Punnett square for each of the genes and then find the fraction that uh, would be the probability for a certain genotype or phenotype to occur. You do that for each one of the genes and then you multiply those fractions together to get your final answer here. And that seems like a quicker way to do these. Okay, so definitely practice these and make sure that you understand it completely.